hi and welcome back to another video my name is castellin and today i'm at the beach and i thought it would be nice to have a chit chat i've been recollecting a lot about the time that i've spent here and there are a couple of things which i wish i knew or there are a couple of things which no one ever prepared me for when coming to dubai and honestly these are things that it's it's really hard for someone to prepare you for like yes you can listen and you can think you understand but you don't really understand it until you're in the actual place uh so if you're new here i currently live in dubai i've been living in the uae for the past five years five years wait i've been living in dubai for six years so i moved to Dubai in February of 2017 and we are currently in 2023 February so it's been officially 6 years and uh so far it has had its ups and downs uh there are some difficult moments and fun moments and memorable moments so i thought we could chit chat about that today so First thing I would like to talk about is why I started a YouTube channel. The interesting thing about Dubai is like whenever you go to YouTube and you search for content in Dubai, most of what you see will be people living life large, Lamborghini, supercars, um expensive things, expensive lifestyles and just you know party city, holiday city and all that. But for the rest of us who live and work in Dubai on a daily basis like it's very rare to find content that's just about a regular person in their regular life maybe middle class or in Dubai I can even be as well as to say lower class because the amount of wealth in the city is large so most of the time when I was searching for content about Dubai and just to you know curious about what other people are experiencing I would find those videos about rich wealthy people money and you know flashy and i really never really found content especially content around just regular life so i thought why not um tap into that content space and that's how i ended up starting this youtube channel so dubai has been great i haven't been living in dubai for the entirety of the time that i've been living in uae UAE has uh, several emirates and for the past 2 years of uh, my stay I was living in an emirate called Ras Al Khaimah this is I think towards the northern part of the country and then after that I moved to another emirate called Sharjah and then eventually I moved to Dubai when I was in Kenya I was working I was working a job and it was just like entry entry level job i was a nutritionist the kenyan uh, job space especially for graduates it's it can be really difficult so i was working as a sales uh, medical sales representative although i was a nutritionist but the products that i was selling were nutrition related products like supplements and vitamins and all that so it tied well into the job however it was minimum wage and you know when i say minimum wage for a kenyan who has just completed university we are talking about 25000 to 30000 30000 30, did i ever get 30000 no it was 25000 i think that was the maximum salary i ever got paid when i was in kenya um i have um a friend who was uh, living in qatar uh we had gone to the same high school together and uh, once we finished high school apparently she went to university and then she moved to qatar <laughs> I had someone to just say hi to me. I had no idea about like the uh, professionals who move and work in these countries. Like I've had people going but who like I don't know. I never thought like me do I want to go to Dubai. Me do I want to go to the Gulf Middle East like me. Eh, no, not really. So I didn't think it was my portion. A friend came back from Qatar and she was telling me about there is jobs there is opportunities like you can make a life for yourself so i was like you know what let me find out more about it i also had some relatives here in uae so there was some sort of you know familiarity with the idea that i can move to a different country and work 
and that's how I ended up in Dubai. I came first on a tourist visa, then I, you know, did the thing, looked for a job, and once I got a job, I settled in. And when I was coming to, to Dubai the first time, like I didn't even think I was going to be able to work here. So I had like I just had one one carry on luggage. I didn't pack anything. All my stuff I left with my sister. I was like, yeah, keep it with me when I come back, blah blah blah. I left Kenya with one carry on luggage, thinking that I was going to be here for just maybe a month or so. And I ended up staying a whole year before going back to Kenya. One of my friends used to tell me. Like, Kasselin, you seem like the kind of person who, like, if the, the first chance you'll ever get to leave home, you will go and disappear and, you know, you won't even miss home, you won't even miss your family. Like, you you seem like the rebel type. And I thought, I thought I was like that. It was me, I was like, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm sure I'll miss home, but I mean, come on, Kenya is so tough to leave. Like, you know, a lot of people, maybe who are struggling in the job space in Kenya or who are just experiencing the economy in Kenya with things right now. Like I'm sure if someone told you right now, get your passport, I have a ticket, we're moving to Australia or I'm going to move you to the UK or something like that. Everyone would say yes in a heartbeat. Unless unless your parents are private developers. <laughs> so when the opportunity kept knocking, I took it as, as fast as, yeah, I, I'll go. Oh. One thing about Dubai that um, nothing, nothing, and I mean nothing. Well, unless you come from Northern Africa or some place where there is de like big deserts or Northern part of Kenya, where you experience a lot of heat, nothing prepares you for the weather. I came in February, it was really cool, such as it is now. It's currently what we call winter in Dubai. Winter in Dubai starts around October and it's a six months with us, so October to March of the next year. So when I came, I came in February, and I was like, oh, the weather is not too bad. Like, I can do this. That time, temperatures were like between 20, uh, 18 sometimes. It was a bit rainy, drizzly here and there, fog. And I was like, oh, the weather is not so bad. How come people say that Dubai is hot and blah, blah, blah? So I settled in. And it only took a month from February to March, for me to realize I knew nothing. So when I came here first, I was staying in Dubai before I moved to Ras Al Khaimah because the job that I got assigned was in Ras Al Khaimah. And I was just noticing the change in temperature. And it was just getting hotter and hotter and hotter to the point where <laughs> I was just like, wait, what? What is going on? First of all, I got sick. So, because of the increase in temperatures, like, it's very hot outside, so we dress lightly, like, the way I'm dressed now, we dress lightly, so I was dressing lightly. But the problem is, whenever you go to a mall or a building, like, they blast the AC like crazy. So you can imagine coming from outside where it's 30, 35 degrees, and immediately drop down to 18 degrees, like, your body struggles to adjust to that. So for me, I hadn't understood that, okay, you can walk outside in any type of light outfit you want to wear, but always carry a sweater. And it sounded so weird to me, but immediately you get into any building, immediately you get into the metro, put on your sweater, because that sudden change in temperature is just hectic on the body. And there's a term for it. I will put it down there if I remember, but there's a term for this um, <laughs> sickness <laughs> that I sort of developed. And I got a very bad throat infection, very bad flu. I was having fever and chills, and I was just like, yeah, Dubai weather, take it easy on me, take it easy on me. Even now, I'm wearing this because I'm outside on the beach. But immediately, I am getting out of here, I have my sweater, and I'm going to put it back on, because there's no way I'm going from, I don't know which temperatures, to some cold AC, and people really love AC. Another thing that I was, uh, struggling to adapt to was the change in currency like many times I used to be like whenever I want to go to buy something I go to the shop then I'm like oh, how much is that five dirhams how much is that in Kenya feeling and converting and converting stopped me from buying so many things it took me I think maybe like three years before I stopped converting prices <laughs> now that's the problem when I went back home I was now converting back to different and I'm like yeah this is not like 
I don't know how to escape that, but it's something that I think many people do, especially when you're dealing with different currencies. Like if you go to Tanzania and then they tell you something is five million, of course you will have to convert it to bring yourself to buy it. Because when you hear five million, you think of five million Kenya shillings, you're like, excuse me, five million? Elbow. But generally, food in here is quite inexpensive, especially if you're like if you're going to a fancy restaurant. Of course, you're gonna have to pay for the food and the experience. But generally, food is very inexpensive. Um, clothes are very inexpensive. Once again, it depends on the type of lifestyle that you want to live. Whether you want to be glamorous and all that, or whether you're just living like a regular person, you know, middle class person. Then. Another thing that I, I found crazy, not crazy, another thing that I found that I had to really, really, really adapt to in Dubai is there is a lot of structure, there's a lot of rules and regulations in terms of daily life and operation. Like you have to you have to always constantly keep in your mind that you need to stay on the right side of the law. It's it's a very easy thing to do because most of the rules are just basic things, but you know in Kenya, like, you can get away with so many things. <laughs> you can get away with so many things. So many people find it hard to adapt to the road. For instance, like crossing the road. Here, you have to cross the road at a designated crossing spot, like the pedestrian crossing. Or you, ha And even if there's a pedestrian crossing, you have to wait until the light is on your side to be able to cross the road. And you know, in Kenya, you just cross anywhere and any place where we feel like. So those subtle, those rules are there in place for everybody's safety. But you know, just coming from lawless lawlessness in Kenya, like people will still cross the road and then you get immediate and huge fines. So this regulation and structure is something also that takes a bit of getting used to. So many people, many, many people who are coming from African countries struggle with that. And that's why you'll see a lot of them falling on the wrong side of the law in the media. But if you just um, adapt and follow this, follow these regulations that have been put in place for your safety, I, nothing, nothing will happen. But I love, the, I love the structure of it all. I love the convenience of everything in Dubai. Um, for instance, going to the hospital, such a seamless process. I think most uh, most hospitals or most clinics, like the maximum amount of time you will spend there, depending on the if you're having a procedure, but if you're just going for a consultation, maybe 20 minutes maximum. Like everything is so fast, everything is so convenient. The thing about Dubai is there is such a mixture of cultures, there is such a mixture of nationalities, such a mixture of different kinds of people like I think almost every nationality in the world or people from every nationality in the world can be found in Dubai. The population of locals is really small compared to the population of experts who are living and working here. So you'll meet everyone from every sort of country that you've ever imagined. What is strange is Regardless of all this variety of options, making friends in Dubai is really difficult. I didn't know how, how much I would miss my friends and family when I was coming to Dubai. Like, there is such a variety of cultures here, there is so many people that you can meet. But making friends is, is really difficult. Especially because of simply um, the constraints of work. So most of the friends maybe that you make are people that you work with. Before you figure out places to hang out or where to go or... Unless you're like a really social person and you like... You like keep up with social gatherings and you know, it's, it will be easier to find like-minded people. Uh, me personally, I'm not, I'm not very shy, but I'm, I'm sort of introverted and... I can be quite reserved sometimes, so it was really difficult for me to make friends. And for the first couple of uh, months that I was staying here, I didn't know where to go or where to hang out or anything like that. So the friends I ended up making are people who I worked with. And it's not, it's sort of a superficial friendship. Like, yes, you can say, I know this person, I work with them, 
but it's not the kind of friendship connections that we have in Kenya, you know, where you really get into knowing each other, knowing each other's families, spending a lot of time together hanging out outside of work. Like when I leave work, all I want to do is eat and sleep. When you go to a land that is not yours and you see a fellow person from your home, you'd be excited and you'd want to, you know, hang out with them and interact with them, like, okay, Kenyans together, stuff like that. But then you quickly realize that, like, genuine friendship is really difficult, especially when it comes to things like dealing with money among friendships. When it comes to money, let me call it money because money ruins a lot of friendships. So dealing with that is very difficult. I made a few friendships when I came here with other Kenyans and so far those have long ended because it was the presentation of what I had at the beginning of the friendship is not what was actually the case. I don't know how, I don't know why it's it's different from here because the friends that I have in Kenya are friends like I've had since I was in college and we're still tight and whenever I go back to Kenya we pick up where they left off. My best friend is, is uh, in Kenya currently and we speak almost every day or every other day we chat and you know on social media and all that but here everybody has their own agendas, everybody has their own goals, everybody is busy trying to achieve, you know what they want to achieve with their lives. So with that being said, it's it's very easy to become a loner in Dubai. For instance, your girl over here, it's very easy to become a loner in Dubai. And then work schedules, work schedules are crazy and everybody is busy. Find a, finding a time where all of you are available at the same time, especially like if you're working in um, in the retail industry or in the hospitality industry since so you're having you have different off days and then what now you can't even hang out together like when you have free time so you only see each other at work and when you leave work you find your own thing to do so it's very possible to become alone when it comes to missing my friends and family back home oh oh my chest oh my people Time moves, uh, people will move on, life changes. Six years is a long time and a lot happens. And I have tried my best to make sure every year, every before the end of every year, I go back home to Kenya to see my family and friends. Since I came every year, 2017, I remember towards the end, after I had been here from February, around December, I went back home for a month. 2018 same thing and the following years but in as much as we have such connectivity which has been enabled by you know digital media like we have phones we have social media we have internet we have all the things that makes connectivity much more easier than it was before you still miss out on so much uh on so much of your family's life or your friend's life. Like since I have been here, I have had two nieces. From when I left in 2017, I left my my, my sisters nice and single. <laughs> now, <laughs> two new members of the family have joined. And yes, I've seen them, like I've seen them maybe when they're three months, then I leave for a year, I come back, the kid is one year old and you know, you miss out on the nuances of daily life. You speak on the phone, you chat all the time, but there is so much in between that you miss out on. I found out so many things that happened that I wasn't aware of, and simply because they were not maybe what they would consider something huge to share with me. They're like, oh, you didn't know why I changed this, or you didn't know I changed this, or I didn't tell you this happened. And I, it, you, I feel so... Like I missed, like I really, really missed out. Even even my best friend, like when I see her hanging out with other people or telling me about her new friends, I'm just like, who are these people? You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. So there is so many things you miss out on. I'm like, when did you get this? And when did you do this? And it's just, everything is just a shock. Like, oh, when did this happen? And when did this happen? And when did this happen? 
and no matter how much you talk on digital media the fact that you're not experiencing everyday life together you will still miss out on so much and that will always catch me off guard i think that is something that i will never adapt to that missing out and always being shocked by stuff and like when did this happen when did you do this this it can be a bit depressing especially because you are the one outsider like they have been there all together so even if you come and say oh you guys you know i did this with my life i did this. it's not a big deal but they have been all together and you become sort of you feel sort of as an outsider towards your own people it's it's not as bad as i'm explaining it but there's some some things that just makes you feel like sort of an outsider talk about relationships <laughs> Let's talk about relationships in Dubai. You know how people make jokes about Nairobi and character development. Same was up. Same was up. <laughs> relationships in Dubai were hala. Oh my god. A lot of people always say like most people most guys in Dubai have two wives. One one Dubai wife and one wife back at home. A lot of people will have their love back home or you know their person back home and then they will come to Dubai and men don't like breaking up so they will not break up with the other person back at home they will go back home see their person come back here date you like pahala but luckily enough I I see I think I can say luckily enough I was lucky enough to find like the few nice and genuine people in this country I believe that so at least that worked out for me but hey before that people i met who were living double lives the thing i remember about living in dubai is if you have if you speak good english it will be challenged if you speak good english it will be challenged and you might even actually start losing your vocabulary all so that diversity of cultures people from different countries accents if you go to um uk there is a british accent if you go to america there's an american accent i don't know if you go to russia you develop a russian accent or if you go to australia oh if you go to australia you have met kenyans who speak with an australian accent if you come to dubai <laughs> we have indians we have filipino we have um and they have very strong accents and i don't know what it is about us kenyans like I don't know we are so accommodating to other people's accents instead of them getting our accent we are the ones who are getting their accents like me personally I don't know why people who hang around me I have not seen them developing like you know this african accent from speaking proper english to saying me me I go me I go now to beach okay me I go now me I go now. oh my god just communicating with taxi drivers communicating with the people at the restaurant and you really have to break down your english in order to be able to communicate and if you're not careful you will like it will start affecting even how you talk to other people it's crazy it's crazy how my english has suffered sometimes i say some things and i'm just like oh, excuse me ma'am what are you saying So definitely your English should suffer your communication will suffer but also you will learn new languages like so far I've learned a couple of words in Tagalog I've learned a couple of words in Hindi I've learned a lot a lot of words in Arabic simply because of the similarity between Arabic and Swahili so that has helped a lot in just you know bridging the communication gaps with different people rent is quite high I will not lie rent rent is a ridiculously high much higher than Kenya like um a neighborhood which you would not consider as a posh neighborhood here in Dubai the rent would be the same as renting in Kilimani or renting in um, Lavington or renting in Westlands you know posh okay what what people would consider posh na- neighborhoods Kenya so you can imagine like posh um we can imagine like high end neighborhoods here in Dubai like rent rent can be can be shocking but that's another thing that I wasn't prepared for before I left Kenya I was I I lived in my bed sit comfortably and most people like when you move out I've noticed this about Kenyans it's not really the first idea that comes to mind to go into group housing most people will move out and find their own 
a one bedroom house or bed sitter or you know self contained room whatever it is but the way the rent is set up here in dubai group housing is not just a it's not just an option it's a necessity like you have to find a roommate especially if you're earning a medium uh, an average salary not a crazy salary you always have to find a roommate you always have to find someone to live with or even if you don't find a roommate like most people we will will advertise their apartments at shared apartments like we are looking for a roommate we're looking you find we're looking for someone to fit in this particular spot so that they can help us pay the rent so group housing is something that i was not prepared for and living with people of such diverse cultures can be difficult because everybody has their own way of doing things like some nationalities have no problem like washing their hair in the kitchen sink um the types of food they cook like some foods just from the in, just from being in the air you so much cannot <laughs> Your stomach cannot digest it. You'll have to pass dinner because the, 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 the aromas, the aromas are quite different to what you're used to. So living with people in group housing is something that I also had to adapt to. Like find living with a roommate or living with people who are not your siblings, like just strangers. <laughs> I never adjusted to it. Levels of hygiene are different for people. Um, levels of um, like managing household budgets are different for people so that is something that also took me a long time to adapt to or i can say i never fully adapted so the chance the first chance i got to just move into a personal space like the current apartment where i'm living i was just like yeah this is so much better and then i actually live with someone i like <laughs> So what I like, so that makes it a whole lot easier. But living with strangers, living with people from different countries is not easy. Oh my God, it's not easy. So this has, yeah, this has been my general experience in uh, Dubai. And if you're adventurous, if you like to experience a different, um, different environment. If you like to make money then i would definitely definitely 100% encourage you to venture outside of kenya but i wish what i wish ultimately is that we could all be able to stay in kenya and get good employment and live in a nice environment and have good governments and have proper development so we can be able to you know enjoy our country and all the beautiful things and resources that it have to offer but unfortunately that is not the case mm -hmm that's it for now thank you for hanging out with me and listening to my story so i'm going to enjoy the beach now um if you like this type of content please let me know down below don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you have any um any suggestions about the type of content that you'd like to see on this channel you can as well drop that in a comment down below i'll be happy to hear from you but for now peace out mm -hmm.